Now we're going to show you how to properly cast for custom photorthotics using the suspension slipper cast method. To prep your splints, take your 30 inch by 5 inch splint and fold it in half like this and take 3 quarters of an inch on top and fold like this. A little bit easier to do it on a hard surface, but you get the idea to get that rim uh, for the top of the slipper cast. Also, the gauze that we recommend is uh, a 3x3 12 ply gauze sponge for holding the fifth and fourth toe. Lisa here is in the supine position, and the position that I'm going to hold her foot is right like this. And a couple of the landmarks that I'm looking for are straight toes all the way across right here, not dorsiflexed, not plantar flexed. And I want the toes to simulate as if she was standing on the ground and putting weight on her foot. So Lisa, go ahead and relax your butt. Relax your calf, your quad. Relax everything. Great. That'll make it a lot easier for me to hold you in a position. We don't want the foot to be supinated nor pronated like this. We want the subtalar joint in a neutral position. We can palpate the talus head on the lateral aspect here with your index finger of your right hand. We are casting her right foot. Use your right hand to find the talus head. And then the medial aspect of the talus head with your thumb. And moving it back and forth and then I'm also taking the second toe and lining that up with the tibia crest to her knee, up to her hip bone. And again, looking for the toes to be in a position right about like this. And as I hold her in the position, her lateral column actually is going to be somewhat pronated, but just the mid-tarsal joints are pronated. The medial mid-tarsal joints are going to be somewhat neutral, where the talonavicular joint is not in a position like this or down in a position like this, but right where it's neutral, so we have this nice contour of her medial arch. The lateral arch is a little bit existent with her, not too much, we can see a little bit right here, but again, loading the lateral part and pulling up on the fifth, fourth, third toes, just like this. So let's start by taking the plaster splints, which you folded over about three quarters of an inch already to go like this, Go ahead and dip it in the water, like that. Gather it in your bottom hand, wring the water out like that. And I like to take my fingers and smooth the plaster splint out this way, just like that. And then I'm going to take the middle of the plaster splint on the top and the bottom middle, and also the left and the right middle, like here, and put her heel right in the in the middle position here, thinking about wrapping her foot in entirety. And I'm going to basically put the end of the plaster right here along her first metatarsal head, the end of the plaster right here along her fifth. So we're covering up here. I'm basically maybe pull up along her navicular just a smidgen like that. Tack it in here. And smooth all this out right in here. All creamy right up against her foot. And I'm going to take the other side, the lateral side, push this over like that. It's great. And this little fold in the back, we'll tuck that under like this. Nice and smooth like that. Perfect. I like to take the inner space between my thumb and my index and really push that into the lateral arch and just use that a little bit, a little bit of your index finger into the medial arch right in this position here. Let's go right on to the second plaster splint. Again, fold it over for reinforcement on the top to have a nice strong cast, bringing the excess water out. Smoothing down the splint like this. And 
just aligning her toes. Lisa, hold your toes right there like that, if you will. Thank you. Not pushing down too hard is to scrunch her toes, but just lightly, lightly drape the plaster splint over like that. Fold one side in, smooth it in, fold the other side in like that. And now at this point, I actually like to grab all toes, her fifth and her first now, all toes together, kind of straighten them out so they're on the line, and then basically pull them apart and separate them a little bit. Really nice. And we'll have a little excess over here, which is fine, a little bit excess here. This is tucked in. This is nice, smooth, and creamy. Continue to push in here. Now I'm going to take the gauze, put it over the lesser toes, and with my inner space, I'm going to pinch her fifth toe, going on to her fourth, maybe her third, right in the sulcus here. And that's a nice position right here. And now this is the most important part where I'm going to basically grab her tailless head, find that neutral position we had identified earlier. I'm now looking again at her toes. They're all in alignment. Her hallux simulates as if she was standing on the ground. So it's not plantarly flexed, it's not dorsally flexed. It's at a nice angle relative to her first metatarsal head, right about right here. Her medial arch nearly represents what we want other than fat pad expansion in the way of support from the orthotic. So if you can imagine cutting out this, these splints and making the orthotic out of this particular material, you want to hold the foot in the exact position that you want the foot to be uh, held in by the orthotic we fabricate at the laboratory. That means the lateral column is nice and straight here, a little bit of a lateral arch, a little bit of a metatarsal arch if there is one right in here, and a medial arch, a long or also called the longitudinal arch, not pronated but in a nice neutral position. The talonavicular joint is neutral, the subtalar joint is neutral, the toes are all in alignment, the hallux is neither dorsiflex nor plantar flex. It's right simulating as if she was standing on a board right here. And as you're casting, I like to push your bo my body right into the position where it makes it a little bit easier on me to cast and hold this until I can hear that the cast is hard and it is ready to be removed. And typically the last splint when I can hear that tapping noise, I know that it's ready to go. So I actually take the skin on the top and pull the skin loose to separate her skin from the plaster, like that. Grasp the heel of the cast and pop the heel off and then slowly remove the slipper cast. And here we have a perfect slipper cast ready to be shipped to the laboratory for the fabrication of custom foot orthotics. We can remove the gauze. And this is a great cast. You can see the little footprints that we have here and the wrinkles. And the forefoot is in great alignment relative to the rear foot. We've got a nice heel cup, which will typically add about an eighth of an inch of plaster in the heel for fat pad expansion. And we'll lower the arch about an eighth of an inch if requested for fat pad expansion here, or uh, a little bit of pronation in the arch if needed. Thanks.